Hi, it's Jules. Thank you so much for coming back. Today is part three of how to needle felt a golden retriever. I wanted to tell you that I'm by no means an expert needle felter. In fact, I only first learned about it in August of 2020. So I have scrubbed the internet for all kinds of tutorials and I thought it would be fun to start a YouTube channel just to show people what I go through when I'm trying to make these mini pets and my different various critters because um, I feel like every single one I'm learning something new and I thought it would be fun just to share that with you and then if you have tips or tricks or comments, see something I'm doing and think, oh, I know a better way, please let me know because I'm very open to feedback and I would like to, to learn more and just be better at it. I also follow a bunch of other felters on YouTube and I'm gonna put their links in my notes so that you can follow them too. All right, so um, part one, we made the wire armature. Part two, we did the core body. And today we're gonna make the head of our golden retriever. So the head is where we start to get a little bit of personality. Um, I'm gonna do that with core wool. I have a box of eyeballs here, which I'll show you. And we'll make a decision about which ones to put on. And um, we're gonna wait and put the nose on last. I learned the hard way that you should always put the nose on last. So um, let's get started. Here's the profile of that dog. And we'll look at that together, okay? So, now, first I'm gonna get a little clump of wool here, and I'm gonna put that off to this side. Or I put it right here, maybe, so you can also see it. Or we'll put it, I have an idea, yeah, we'll just do that. There we go. Now everybody can see it. Um, so first, you can see the head is round, so I'm gonna make a round ball like this. And if you make it really tight like this, it makes the needle felting go a little quicker because you don't have to stab myself again. Here's the round head. I'm trying to make it really tight. So first I'm just checking the head part. You know, what does it look like with the body? Obviously that is real small, but don't forget we're gonna have to add more wool to attach it, so that will make it bigger too. And then I'm gonna get a little bit more wool here and make like a cone to go on and be the snout. So for the cone, sometimes what I do is I'll get a stick or something, wrap it around like this. Helps make a cone to wrap something around, just roughly. You can see I'm bleeding again. That, that's pretty rough, right? Here's a lot of extra. Here's a cone. So I'll put that in place. And then I'll use this part here and let's put that on the head, kind of a way to attach. Now you can see obviously that's super long. We'll fix that. We'll fix it. Move that aside. Okay. This is probably a little bit too long of a nose. There we go. So I'm gonna push it back here. Pin it in place. See how I folded that back. Okay, so basically I'm just trying to model this shape here after this dog's head. I'm gonna try to make the profile. So you see here how it goes straight and then like you can see the ball of the head. That's what I'm trying to match. My plan is not to have her mouth open though. So that's one thing that's different. There we go. So I think that that's roughly a good slope. I think it's probably, she. see how it, I'm gonna add a nose later, 
So I'm not that worried about the nose part. I just wanna kinda get the general shape correct. And like the length, kinda get it roughly similar. All right, so I'm gonna look up the actual dog now. That seems about right in terms of the size of the head and the size of the nose ratio. You can even make the picture about the size of your actual felting so you can get roughly, you know, the proportions. It's a little ball and there's a tube, right? So I think let's look at that now in relation to this dog, her head. So this head seems still a little bit small, I think, but when we add the neck, we'll add a little bit more. So let's do that. All right, let's put her neck on now. Where's the best way? Probably like this. As you can see, I'm just trying to figure it out myself. And I'm just kind of stabbing that piece onto the head that we just created and now onto the body we just created so that they'll become one piece. So this piece is allowing it to stick to the body. This is creating the neck and then this is making it, you know, part of the, her head. So once you have the head on here, you can kind of build up more if it looks too small. It's just sort of a matter of building it up and then, you know, having it solid enough so that it stays on. And if you remember, we have a tiny bit of wire in the neck. So once we have the head on, we could move it if we want to, to look to the left or look to the right. And that's sort of fun sometimes too, right? So now I'm stabbing in like this, starting at the top of the head and stabbing in like this and in, 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 into her neck. Because I, what I want to do is to make this become all one piece. So the needle has little barbs at the end that are mixing up all of these wool fibers and basically making them stick together. What do we think? So don't forget when we add fur, that will also add some volume. I also, I ask a lot of times for pictures from the top, cause look at her, look, she looks really skinny to me. We may have to add more. I just felt bad because that core body video was so long. We can add more though, as we go. So there we go. Let's take a look now. There's that. Yeah, her head seems, actually her head seems okay. The neck is really skinny, see that? See how it's fat there and it's so skinny there? We add, which is good. It'll actually give us something to hold the head on a little bit more. So let's add some more neck. We'll just kind of wrap it around like this. More neck. Squishy, so you can kind of stab that into place a little bit more too. This, right now, she, she looks like she's got a really big chest. And see how this is sort of wobbling? I just want to put more there like this. So I'm laying the, the wool over it like that. I'm just gonna stab it all so it becomes one piece, one dog. So 
So this is changing the bridge of her nose a little bit, but I'm not gonna worry about that yet. I can tweak the bridge of her nose later. I just wanna get, you know, a solid head on there. The important parts for a dog are the round head and then like a tube shape for the nose. And then of course different dogs have different shapes and that's, you know, why you, I do them separately anyway. Round head and then maybe like a squishy nose or whatever. Okay, that feels a little more solid. Maybe we need a little more on this side now. We'll needle felt that in. Okay. What do we think? It's pretty good. All right. So I think if I look at her now, see how that dog has a snout and then it curves up like this and our dog doesn't have that. It doesn't curve up. So what I'm gonna do now is add a little bit more on top of her head to get that little curve part. Maybe like a little blob. Add like a little extra like this. So I can feel it. I can still feel the ball in there and then this feels super loose. This part, see how it's loose? I can feel it. I'm gonna stab a little bit more and I'm actually gonna add a little more wool here just to make this more solid. This nose is really fat. That dog has a much skinnier nose. That dog has a much skinnier nose. So sometimes if I overdo it, I actually cut the wool. And I might do that, but not yet. I'm gonna just kind of get this on here, you know. Yeah, that's real fat. That is real fat nose. There's another one of the actual dog. You can see her nose is actually pretty big. All right, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more to her head and then we'll work on eyeballs. As you can see, a lot of this for me is just eyeballing it. I'm guessing there's probably tons of better ways to do it, but this is just for me how I have found it works, adding a little at a time as opposed to having it be too big right away or something and building it up like this is easier, I think, than getting it a giant ball right away. It's better for me to build up the head slowly, try to get it as close as I can to what I see there. What do we think? The other piece is too, when we add the ears, it's gonna add more volume to the back of her head. So I know that. Um, I'm gonna find a picture of the front of her Here's the front, there's the front. So when I look this way now, I gotta get a sense of where the eyeballs will go. And if you look, you can see, see there's, her eyes are kind of close to the edge of her head, but still she probably needs a little more volume on the sides. We'll add some eyeballs in there. Let's do that, let's add just a little more volume to her head on this, like this. Wrapping around.
And now looking at her, try to point the nose the same way the picture is. See how much head there is on top. Does she have enough head up there? Big enough head. All right, it's getting pretty big now. I think that might be good. Okay, so again, I'm kind of eyeballing this. And um, as we make her, we can tweak things, change her shape a little. You can always stab harder to make things smaller because it's wire, you can kind of push it down like this too. Um, and you can cut her nose, which I'll do later if I find I think it's too thick. But for now, I think we need a little bit firm of a head because to put the eyes in, the head has to be pretty firm. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna make the head and the nose a lot more firm now. And in doing this, the more often you stab, the smaller things get. So I may need to add more wool. I'm trying to shape her nose down here. Give her a little curvature there, see? But while making it all one piece. You do want the head to be kind of firm because later when you do things like add fur and add eyeballs, then um, if you try to stab them in, it changes the shape and you don't want that. So it's called needle sculpting because you can sculpt with your needle, which is what we're doing now. Getting a little arm work out. We're getting there. Okay. See, in doing that, we kind of lost some of the sides. So I'm gonna put more on so that we can build the head up a little tiny bit more and have a place to stick the eyeballs in. And that's pretty firm feeling. It feels pretty firm. It's kind of getting where I want it to be. And squish it a little bit. Okay. And I want some volume here and volume here so I can add the eyeballs. Isn't this fun? It's kind of goopy, right? I think it's fun. It's fun to watch it become something. Very satisfying. Okay, that I feel like is better. Now her neck seems to me to be really long now, but I'm gonna just smush it down a little like this. I'm smushing her down and then pushing down. Oh, I broke my needle. Uh, that sucks. I'll get myself another needle. That seems okay. I'm trying to make her neck a little bit shorter now. Let's check this again. I think that's pretty good and I wanna look at her head. 
can kind of see. I think that's pretty good actually. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the eyeballs. Nice brown eyes like this. So I have some box of glass eyeballs and I will link to this. Some I have are brown already. Let's see, see this brown's pretty light. I have clear ones and usually what I have to do is go through and find ones where the pupils match because with this kit, I found some have little pupils and then some have really big pupils. So see how one is little and one is big, bigger anyway. That's even smaller. I just want ones that match here. Let's look. I just want to find two eyeballs that look pretty similar to each other. And then we'll go from there. Well, those are pretty similar. Okay, let's go with those two. Now, if I don't have an exact brown, in fact, if I feel like this is too light and I want to do brown eyes, I have a bunch of nail polish. Sometimes actually I'll just try Sharpie and put Sharpie on the brown eye that I have. Sometimes that works totally fine. Let's actually try that first. Do these pupils match? No, they're all different pupil sizes. Oh, those seem pretty good. Okay, let's look at these two. Sometimes what I do is I literally just take a brown Sharpie and let's do this on like a little, this little mat thing so we can see what we're doing. And I will draw in here. If it's dark enough, then I'm, that's good. That's actually pretty good. Can you see how it's so much darker than this one? Oh yeah, that might be fine. The other thing I'm gonna try just to show you, um, I have this plastic, I don't know, it's like the top of some makeup or who knows, cosmetic something or other. And I have different kinds of nail polish that I bought. That's actually why my nails are two different colors, brown, you might have wondered, because um, I was testing them out. But I have a dark brown, and I have like a pinky color, and I have white, and I even have black. And what I do sometimes is just, you know, put it in here. This brown might just be good enough too. But if I need to mix it, I'll put a drop in there, and then I'll put a drop of like something lighter or something darker, maybe a little bit lighter brown that and then I'll use this one because I think that's the closest one anyway then I'll mix it up in there can you see that kind of see and that makes the paint a little less brown because I mix the dark brown and the light brown and then I'm going to take these clear ones and just paint on the bottom and then I'll decide which one seems to be closest to the actual Lacey's brown eyes. I think I might go with these that we did with the Sharpie. I think they are nicer. And here's our dog. We kind of put the nose in the same angle as the picture and get a rough idea of where those eyeballs are. And I'm gonna make a little, let's see, you can see it's like, see so this would be where the nose is here and they're a little up, like this, here-ish. So we make a little stab like this, and another one on this side. And I have this all, it came with a kit that I will link, link to, this crazy kit I got for Christmas. Stick that in there like this. Maybe it needs to be a little bit lower. And then here's our first eyeball. Make sure to stick it in there. And then I'm gonna do the same. Then it looks about there. If 
I know, really have to stab it in there. Okay, so the, the last thing you're going to want to do is add glue so that it don't fall out. I think that's pretty good. So we have to go back to our glue here. And usually I don't, I usually try to make it so that I take it like part of the way out like this, not all the way. Cause they're hard to get in and out for whatever reason, especially when the wool is very um, solid. Like I, I try to make the head really solid. So put a little glob of blue glue, put a little glob of, glob of glue. God, that's hard to say. See, I already can't get it in. I'm gonna stick it in there. Push that in. I feel like it didn't go all the way in. But that's okay. Dang it. Okay, and then we'll do the same on this side. I'm gonna pull it out part of the way like this. And then stick a little glob of glue. Glob blob of glue? That's what I'm trying to say. Blob of glue? We'll let that dry. Well, thank you for joining me again today for part three, adding the head to our golden retriever. I think she looks pretty cute. I mean, she looks like an alien right now, but join me for part four when we're gonna start adding fur.